are you right, left, or center? We believe that God's people exist above that mechanism. Right. Right. What? So the same thing. What kind of church are you? What mm -hmm. denomination are you? God's church exists above that mechanism. We're looking at it through the spirit of prophecy and we're saying this person foolish. was saved. This person moved in the spirit mm -hmm. of God. And, and those were all brothers and sisters. And to me, that's wonderful because that's that's a message of reconciliation. You Absolutely. Don't, it's a message that says, look, we we accept you if you want to go to heaven. God his prophets, his apostles, mm -hmm. the church is called to bridge worlds. All people are divided over all kinds of issues and over all kinds of things as, as arbitrary as the tone of their skin. But the church is the place where all those divisions actually can dissolve and people can come together in humanity. And the dividing line is whether in spirit you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hi, welcome back to God of Me podcast. We're so happy to be here again with you today. We are your hosts. My name is Sophia Benyon. This is my cousin, Peyton Benyon. Welcome back to our channel, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us today. If you are new here, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We will appreciate it so much. Today, we are so happy to have a guest on our show again. Um, we really love having guests. Like, it's fun to talk to each other, but yeah. having guests is like the best, yeah, right? For sure. Love having guests. So our guest's name today is Brother Addison Everett. Um, he is a minister and apostle in our church, and we want to talk about our church today because this is where we, when, well, when we were born, well, our parents weren't saved when we were born. My dad was, but well, I was four when my parents, was, but like we were really young when our parents, um, joined the church, got saved, however you want to say it. And, um, so this is how we've been raised and that makes it, that makes us such an integral part of who we are. Um, you can't know us without knowing the church. And since, and we, and since we named ourselves a whole Gotta Be Me podcast, I guess this is just another about dimension. To find, you're about to find out about ourselves. it. So we're so excited, like I already mentioned, to have Brother Addison here to talk to us about that. He knows a lot about the history, and he's just very articulate. So we're very excited to have him <laughs> here with us. Brother Addison Everett. Hello. <laughs> we thought, like, just to get started, we might want to talk about some of the reasons we call ourselves what we call ourselves. We call ourselves the Church of God because we feel like that's who we are. We're God's church. And um, a lot of times people act really confused about that. Like, but what denomination are you? And Addison, do you want to just speak to that? Like why we would say we're interdenominational and why we call ourselves the Church of God? Sure, I'll give it a try. <laughs> so people sometimes have a difficult time conceiving of what we mean when we say anti-denominational, mm -hmm. right? They want to they wanna be able to peg it or identify it in a way that they understand. And they, they've seen denominationalism. They've seen, they grew up around whatever church or mm -hmm. the Catholic church or whatever religion. And they tend to think of us in the same terms or want to compare us and <clears throat> When we say we are the church of God, we are not saying the same thing, okay? Right, right. So it sounds the same to them because it's the church of mm -hmm. whatever it may be. The, um, there's a Baptist church and the Pentecostal church mm -hmm. and the church of Mormon. And, uh, but we believe that the church of God is an organism, not just an organization. Mm -hmm. The we believe that everybody who is saved is a part of the church of God. Mm -hmm. So we tend to think of church like in, in, in denominational mm -hmm. sections, mm -hmm. right? What church do you go to? And, and certainly we attend church services, but we view the church as a universal entity that takes in all the saved people mm -hmm. of all time. Right. across the right, entire right, right. world. Even people that we haven't met ourselves, people we don't know, mm -hmm. they don't have to have sh uh, shaken my hand or know you personally mm -hmm. uh, or pray at our prayer bench, what's sometimes called an altar, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. us to acknowledge that they're saved. If you are saved and you love God and you're walking in all the light that you have, we acknowledge you as a brother. Right. Mm -hmm. The old timer said we reach our hands in fellowship to every, every blood washed one. Mm -hmm. And that means that uh, it's, it's very inclusive. It's exclusive in the sense that it excludes all 
unrighteousness to the right. best of our knowledge and ability, but it includes everybody who's saved, regardless of where they're from, or what background. I mean, you all know some of my background. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll talk about it here a little bit, but regardless of where you're from or um, where you've been, if you're saved, you're a part of the church of God, and that takes in everybody. And so it's fundamentally not the same thing mm -hmm. as a denomination. Mm -hmm. And we would actually feel like denominations would actually be, <clears throat> you know, in a way, the way you were talking about the church being inclusive would actually be exclusive because if you don't identify with that particular brand, then you're not a part. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're a child of God, then you're just a child of God and you're a part of the church of God. You could totally believe something different than us. Uh -huh. You could disagree with us on doctrine. Mm -hmm. You could disagree with how we dress. You mm -hmm. could disagree with how we look. You could think that I'm ugly. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> it might be true anyway. I don't think but, <laughs> but if you are saved and you're walking in the light, you're in love with Jesus Christ. We are Christians. We're unabashedly, unashamedly Christians. I know some of your audiences ask questions like, mm -hmm. tell us who you are. We, so, we told them we're Christians, but it wasn't enough, you know? Sure. Well, people want to be able to narrow it down. And they do so just feel more comfortable with a label that's yeah. already in their head. Like we're, as humans, we just tend to compartmentalize things mm -hmm. and we don't understand like God is a lot bigger than that. And his that's team right. is a lot bigger and the world is a lot bigger than just where we are. You know what I mean? That's right. And, and we don't mind a label, but as long as that label doesn't sequester us into a space mm -hmm. that we don't identify with, right? Mm -hmm. We don't identify as a sect. We don't identify mm -hmm. as a as a Protestant denomination right. of which you have fellowship and um, follow a certain party or denominational mm -hmm. creed. We, we acknowledge anybody who's truly saved and the Lord knows who those people are. Right. Uh, they don't have to believe everything I believe or know everything that I know. Now, ultimately, we believe that God is going to bring all of his people into unity. And, mm -hmm. and while we may never see everything exactly the same because humanity is so diverse and human mm -hmm. experience is so diverse, we do believe in a substantial unifying of all races Absolutely. or ethnicities and, and people. And that's what the Church of God represents. It's actually a, it's a message of inclusion and love. Mm -hmm. uh, and the opposite of that, of course, is that it excludes unrighteousness, as I said before. I think, I think, you know, I agree so much with all that you said. And I think another reason of, for people's discomfort is because they want us to be like something they've seen before. So they start saying, you know, are you, you know, the big one, are you Amish? <laughs> But, you know, there's no black Amish, like we've said 500 times. <laughs> and I'm just saying, like, they're, they think they've almost got us pinned down, and then we do something else that's like, wait, what? Yeah. And uh, that's another thing I wanted, to ask, I would, wanted to ask you to speak to was, you know, are, are, I think people get confused about, because <laughs> everything's so political these days, right? Everybody, people feel like if they can put you somewhere politically, then they, then they know about you. Right. And I think that's another thing that confuses people because what is our stance as a church of God politically? I saw someone the other day comment about us being conservative or liberal and they liked that we like dressed conservatively and held conservative values but like had liberal social values somewhat and they were really interested because of the way we speak in that fashion, which I think we are influenced by our, um, like in just like a worldly sense, I know we're not liberal conservative, but our moms <laughs> do lean a little left so I think we're, affected by that so we might be more so than other people but mm -hmm. as a church right well you can't be mad at people because like you said they want to be able to relate to mm -hmm. the thing and if they're interested in what you have to say they want to know what do you represent mm -hmm. and people are interested in things like Amish and you right. know when I grew up I didn't I, I, I we didn't have Amish in the area where I grew up mm -hmm. so it was always like this really um, far out thing that maybe one day I'll see an Amish person, <laughs> I <don't> see <laughs> an Amish person. <laughs> and you know so it's it's it, it it intrigues people and it gets their curiosity and so uh, but I have something to say about the thing you just brought up if you if you want to talk about that so mm -hmm. you know so what is the church of God or where do you stand on this issue or that issue? Well, there's obviously a lot of polarization right, so much. around politics and around issues and social issues. And at times, the church, and I mean at large, Christendom has 
oftentimes either avoided the issues, Absolutely. the social issues, and possibly with the assumption or the belief that the church isn't responsible for I think that's absolutely been the thought. Dealing with those mm -hmm. things, right? And humanity is the church's business. Right. And either they avoid the issues or they start to identify on, on these ends of polarity. So they are a conservative church or a liberal church. Mm -hmm. And we actually defy those labels. Right. And again, people want to be able to say, but what are you? But what mm -hmm. are you? Say, well... Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that easy of a question because right. if we let the mainstream narrative frame the language right. that identifies us, mm -hmm. then we get pushed into a camp mm -hmm. that we don't identify with, we, right. don't, we don't agree with, right? So you can talk about conservative and you can talk about liberal mm -hmm. and which is right, mm -hmm. all right? And, or, or which are you, conservative or liberal? Mm -hmm. And my answer is, Either, or I'm sorry, my answer is neither or both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my answer. Are you conservative or are you liberal? Neither or both. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a false dichotomy that conservatism and liberalism are diametrically opposite both or that other. they're... That they can't coexist. That they, that they don't right? coexist, right? Mm -hmm. That they're mutually exclusive. It's, mm -hmm. it's a false dichotomy. The fact is that the principles of those things... Uh, or there are elements because there are conservative and liberal principles that are absolutely right. Absolutely. But mm -hmm. the conservative or so-called liberal system, right? Exactly. Then tries to box you in mm -hmm. and and claim these principles. But the fact is, the principles of liberalism and conservatism don't exist separate from one another. They actually coexist, mm -hmm. and we believe they coexist in the church, mm -hmm. and they coexist in God's plan. And are really at their best when they're doing that. That's right. right. That's right. We can we could go down the line, and sometimes I, I'm a bit humored because I have a lot of friends that are on quite uh, ends of the the spectrum. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just imagine that for that as in dust, like people that are way over here mm -hmm. and way I, over here. I do. Here. Yeah. I I I have a, and it's because I. I relate to both, like not even just ideologically, but mm -hmm. personally I do. I was do. gonna say like even outside of the church, you would be more that type of person, right? Yeah, I think I tend to relate to a, a lot of spaces at once. You know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that kind of tends to be. can be positive. Yeah, so, you know, when you're having conversations about the issues, people kind of want to know, are you, taking a conservative position about this issue mm -hmm. or a liberal position about mm -hmm. the issue. And again, it's, it's, it's neither or both. Mm -hmm. It's a church of God position. Absolutely. It's a Christian position. And someone's welcome. Someone can be a Christian and disagree with us. No problem. Mm -hmm. Right? But we have to, the Bible says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. We have to be persuaded about what we believe or what are we standing on. Exactly. Right? So oftentimes, because we can hold both sides of the issue. Or we can look at one side and say, you know what, you're right. And mm -hmm. simultaneously do the same thing, look at the other side and say, you know you're, right. you're right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't like that, mm -hmm. right? And that causes controversy. And it may cause you plenty of controversy <laughs> as, as your podcast grows because people want you to identify with a side. They mm -hmm. want to, as we talked about, they want to be able to put a label, a strict label on you. And the fact is that both sides are often right about a lot of issues, mm -hmm. right? And the only way humanity is ever going to reconcile is when you allow the other person to be right. Allow right. the other, allow the other perspective. You can't like me being right doesn't mean doesn't disallow you being right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It's I can be right and you also can be right. Now I'm not saying that everything's always, you know, that there's no definite truth. There's right. no absolute. Right. We don't believe truth is relative. But I'm just saying there are perspectives about things, especially when you're talking about uh, social issues. Right. And not everything's one dimensional. Exactly. It's just not. You can argue, I mean, you can talk about borders, you can talk about, you know, different things, and you can argue it from different angles. And um, it's, it's a, the subjects are, are deep and they require a, a certain um, open mindedness mm -hmm. and a certain willingness to 
exchange with your fellow man about what they have to say. You know, right. we have a tendency to just write people off. You know, if because of a few words, huh? Yeah, right. Or they say they say a trigger words, word. Right? Yeah. There's a trigger word, or they, or you know, you perceive that. Like I, I I'm not going to. I'll just be. I can just talk about myself, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a. I'm. I'm a. First Amendment purist, okay? I believe in, the, I believe in free speech. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who don't, don't like that. It's amazing because it's become increasingly that way. But what's amazing to me is that there are so-called liberals mm -hmm. that are against free speech. Like you're liberal and you're against, like that seems like it can't that's coexist, right? right. Someone, someone's gonna get offended about this right now, but that's fine, <laughs> no problem. God bless you. But, Be blessed. But to, to, um, what word I'm trying to find, to limit speech is the most opposite of liberal that you most can possibly opposite. have. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, anyway, that's just an example of how the church is able to hold these issues. I feel like mm -hmm. it's the only space, it's, it's like a very nice space to create for unity, actually. Exactly. And that's the space the church should be, even though many times, I mean, false church has not been that way. It's been like the most polarizing of anything, you that's know? That's right. Christians just be dividing over Ooh, anything, everything, things. you know? Right. Anything we can find to trip up about, mm -hmm. you know? Instead of being that space for unity. I feel like because of this, it's always going to end up being a battle of narrative. Like, mm -hmm. I think probably as long as we have a podcast, we're going to have to every once in a while make one where we're just reconstructing the story and, you know, defining your words. Yes. Saying, you know, explaining what we mean, using that precision of language to keep bringing it back because everybody and everything is going to keep trying to push us either here or there. That's here right. Or there. And we're just going to keep pulling it. Nope, not there. Nope, not there. And bringing it back to the center where the church exists mm -hmm. and I think I well, can, like, can, can I can please. I challenge that I don't think I don't think the church exists at the center because that assumes that there's a right and a left and we're in between both of those okay, okay. I know what you mean when you say that yeah. mm -hmm. but but that so this is what happens we let them and by them I just mean whoever you want to say the system the right? system politics the the, mm -hmm. the the media we let them control the language so you said reframe the narrative or forget mm -hmm. what word you used which was the phrase which was correct but when we let when we subscribe to their language right. then it presumes certain things it it accepts a premise mm -hmm. that we we actually don't accept and this is how mm -hmm. this is how it works a lot of times is people or the media will 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 state something mm -hmm. or get you to contend on an issue and pick a side and then you pick a side feeling like this is probably the most probably. reasonable side mm -hmm. but then you feel good about having chose the best side, but then you swallowed the premise that there even is those two, two sides. Two sides, right? Right. That's really good. And so, See, I was doing so, it without even thinking about well, it. Well, it's because we're so you, we're so trained and conditioned to think that way, it's right? It's hard mm -hmm. to navigate your way out of it. Exactly. So it's the same thing. It's like, are are you right, left, or center? We believe that God's people exist above that mechanism. Right. Right? right, so the same thing. What kind of church are you? What mm -hmm. denomination are you? God's church exists above that mechanism. That conversation. Th that right. It's it's a it's a different kind. It's fundamentally and essentially a different thing. That's so good. And as we're talking about all of this um, redefining of narrative and um, redefining your definitions and making sure people understand what you're saying, I think it's very important that we also clarify our history because, as we know. History is, I'm going to say it backwards, history is prophecy um, fulfilled and prophecy is history foretold. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that we make sure we have the right connections as we go back. Would you be able to speak? We always say we, we go back to the church in Acts and everything since then has been church of God. Would you be able to speak as to some of the key you would point to as a part of our history or why we would even say that? Yes. So... Again, it sort of defies what we typically think of as convention when we're dealing with. Sorry, Where's the little brother. <laughs> These girls are pros. Okay. They got this down. <laughs> yes, yes, we're recording. <laughs> Your door and all that. <laughs> hey, everybody, that's Dad. If you haven't met Dad yet, <laughs> it's at least the third time he's done this. So. <laughs> Okay, so when you're handling this subject, 
it's a similar principle because if you just go back and you look for a certain church, it's not always that easy, right? Mm -hmm. Because because we recognize and acknowledge anybody who saved mm -hmm. and served God and fulfilled their calling and tried to make a difference in the world. And because of all of the the things that happen in history, you, as you go through, you know, the uh, the Dark Ages and and the different periods, uh, the Protestant Reformation, and mm -hmm. some of those things were, uh, there, there were a lot of upheavals and a lot of divisions and a lot of darkness, a lot of spiritual darkness. There's a reason it's called the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. That's right. There were people that stood for something during that time, but maybe because of the era, the understanding wasn't there, or they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't understand doctrine just how we do now, and mm -hmm. they wouldn't have, uh, identified some of them even as Church of God, but oftentimes they did because they knew well, the church is just the church of God. God's church, it's, literally. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'm trying to say that this would, inc this would include people that, you know, your viewers may recognize as historical church leaders, but it may also include people that we would acknowledge who did amazing things and, and made affected real change mm -hmm. that you wouldn't typically think of inside of that sphere. And we can talk about some of those people too, but you obviously have the, the apostles and the, the early church and acts. Mm -hmm. And we could go through a lot of history. I'm not sure how much detail to go into, but essentially you had the apostles of the early church mm -hmm. that followed Jesus and they preached the gospel, <clears throat> which this is probably a question some of your people have too, or would why we even say we have apostles. That's kind mm -hmm. of a major. That's a big one. That's a major claim <laughs> to make, right? One, right? <clears throat> so, so you had the the original twelve apostles, and then other people who came and were were called apostles. Mm -hmm. And the early apostles said that there would be an apostasy or a falling away right. from the gospel that they preached, and that happened. And there was a lot of a lot of darkness that came because of it, and there were different reformers that rose up throughout the years to try to correct the course mm -hmm. or uh, stand for some particular thing that they saw or against some kind of corruption in the church. Mm -hmm. And those people are heroes of faith. You know? Absolutely. I mean, um, we are not Mennonites, but Menno Simon is someone that contributed a lot mm -hmm. of good. And he actually, if you read his writings, referred to the church as the church of God. Yeah, he didn't call himself a Mennonite, right? Right. <laughs> Right, um, John Huss, and you know, you, you could kind of jump around through history, but the Wesleys were a, a really imp important figure. So we're not Methodists, mm -hmm. right? But the Wesley brothers were very influential in God's divine plan and brought a certain light back to the church and understanding. Um, in the eight, late 1800s, a man named Daniel Warner which is maybe a less known historical figure, which mm -hmm. we have a documentary for, Shameless Plug, The Oneness Please. of Man, <laughs> directed by Brother Stephen P. Hargrave, yeah. uh, tells about the life and labors of D.S. Warner and how he actually solved the racism issue mm -hmm. in the 1800s, but then mm -hmm. this history got covered over. Uh, you need to watch the documentary. You need it's, to. Yes, it's outstanding understanding. But anyway, I'm jumping around a bit, but there are all these people that, uh, now Brother Warner identified himself as Church of God also. Mm -hmm. But, uh, like, there are people, and, th and this is going to get uh, maybe a bit offensive to somebody, and um, I guess that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Can't make God everybody happy. <laughs> but even people like Malcolm X, who is a very controversial person mm -hmm. in history, and are you calling Malcolm X a Christian? I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. um, did he go to heaven? Well, I don't know, and, and neither, neither do you. Neither do you. So I, I'm glad I'm not the judge of those things. But if you look at the, traje the trajectory of his life and, and some of the amendments he made to his positions and understanding and the direction he was moving and uh, even the, the, the morality in which, by which he lived. Mm -hmm. and he, Malcolm X lived better than a lot of Christians do. To be honest, to his militancy, yeah, and his dedication, well, even, even his and... yes, his 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 moral compass. So, you know, I'm not I'm not saying Malcolm X was saved, uh, but I would rather. Sometimes there are there are people like that that 
we're making a more effective difference in the world so, than, mm -hmm. than church people were. Than the Methodist church Look, down the street. Sometimes right? church is a joke. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just telling you, like, I didn't, I didn't grow up, I'm getting off the subject a little no, bit here. You, you I, didn't, I didn't grow up in church, mm -hmm. okay? For us, we, we grew up in an environment with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's, that's the environment I came, around, came up around. And, you know, church was somewhat foreign to me, and then I, I became saved as, as a young man. How old were you? Uh, 19 or 20. This is my age. Yeah, that's a good age to be. <laughs> I didn't know what getting saved was. I didn't mm -hmm. understand it, but it happened to me because I wanted to please God and I wanted to change. I'm just trying to say that when I started getting around church people, I was quite turned off. And Really? Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a big interest in just being religious, mm -hmm. which is so funny because when people see the way we look, right, that's their first thought. That's they think, oh, you're really strict religious people. Well, mm -hmm. how, do, how do you define that? I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to just be religious. Mm -mm. And yeah, we believe in dressing a certain way. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to the historical. And, and the, okay. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> this is a podcast. However it goes. <laughs> yeah. So we dress a certain way, and, and some people don't like that. And people throw around terms like, legalistic or controlling or whatever, mm -hmm. but everybody dresses according to a certain style or right. a theme or a code, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I grew up around a lot of Harleys and, and the biker crowd dresses a certain way. Right. There's a look, there's a look to and it. Nobody's asking them to file right. by what they wear. And also nobody's asking them, why are you dressed like that? And no one's right. asking them if they're a cult, even though they no. could sure. be considered as such, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> by yeah. By definition. Absolutely. So everybody dresses a a certain way according to a certain style or mm -hmm. uh, theme or a code, right? And everybody has a dress standard. I suppose the nudist colony, uh, wherever they exist, <laughs> never seen an one. Dress standard That's a dress or code. <laughs> That's that is verifiably a dress code. Dress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just saying, you know, how how long should the sleeves be or how mm -hmm. how long should the skirts be? Mm -hmm. well, right. First of all, we don't care nearly as much about that as people think as that people we do. Think. Mm -hmm. Right? We don't we don't talk about as much as people talk. They talk, <laughs> they about, talk it about it more, more than, than we, we do. do. They right. definitely do. Yeah, it's fine. I get I get it. It's curiosity. You look distinct. We want to look distinct. Mm -hmm. We do that intentionally. Mm -hmm. it's but it's not that we're hung up on it like that. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not what you're dressing in is not the most important thing, right. right? But what I'm simply trying to say is there are people who call us legalistic because we dress a certain way, and I would turn to them and say, "But don't you believe in dressing a certain way? Like there are mm -hmm. boundaries for mm -hmm. how how short you're, unless you're showing up to service and you're Daisy Dukes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I'm I mean, the, there there is a, there is a dress code that we all like. There's propriety, mm -hmm. and we all want to observe propriety. And whether I wear a, you know longer sleeves or shorter sleeves, we're not. We're not saying heaven or hell hinges on that, mm -hmm. but people get hung up on it, right? Mm -hmm. So all this relates because when you, when you look at the church world, this is actually what we are defies convention in people's right. minds. It right. defies people's expectations. And if you look down through history, how we view, we didn't say our denomination was founded in 1888 and mm -hmm. this happened and this person. And, you know, we're, we're looking at it through the spirit of prophecy and we're saying this person foolish. was saved. This person moved in the spirit mm -hmm. of God. And, yes. and those are all brothers and sisters. Those are all, mm -hmm. you know, those are all saints. Those are all church of God people. And to me, that's wonderful because that's that's a message of reconciliation. You Absolutely. Don't, it's a message that says, look, we we accept you if you want to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. or, no, not just if you want to go to heaven. If, you, if you're willing to live yes. like you want to <laughs> yes, go to heaven. Right. Because we do require... Uh, we do require sincerity of, mm -hmm. of well, li God living. God requires it, right? Like, that's right. It's just quite, that's, I mean, the definition of a Christian. You're following Christ. Absolutely. If you're doing your best to follow Christ, you're a part. Mm -hmm. And I think when people see... Um, church not acknowledging truth like that and getting hung up it's and being so often. I think that is what makes church a joke like when mm -hmm. when people go and say Malcolm X didn't do anything good okay now you're making church a joke because mm -hmm. he did something for a certain group of people that was positive and now you're foolish because you're excluding this and excluding that and and it's not the spirit of prophecy which is more fluid you can't than put a lot of people a would like to in a box right admit. like a spirit is not right it's not something like the spirit moves where 
the like Jesus said, the wind blows where it listed. listed. Like you mm -hmm. can't do that to the the spirit of prophecy. And, and people will hear that, and and you know there may be a tendency to think that we have a. Well, it's it's this tendency to think either you're just this really strict sect, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. or or it's purely ecumenical, and Again, and, it's, and, right. and it's neither, right? Mm -hmm. Because and both are yeah, it's it's the same displaced. bridging the bridging the worlds, time. The whole right? Time. So it is. God, His prophets, His apostles, mm -hmm. the church is called to bridge worlds. All people are divided over all kinds of issues mm -hmm. and over all kinds of things as as arbitrary as the tone of their skin, mm -hmm. or or whether you like shooting firearms or not, or mm -hmm. believe in the right to defend your family, right. whatever mm -hmm. the, you know, but the church is the place where all those divisions actually can dissolve and people can come together in humanity. Mm -hmm. and, and the dividing line is whether in spirit you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Is Lord right? mm -hmm. And all of those differences become actually beautiful, you know, just different facets of one organism that lives and works together and it doesn't have to be the differences don't have to be divisive right They're that's just, right they become a part of who you are but your unity is not interrupted by that inside of you well not only is it not interrupted it's actually necessary so mm -hmm. god mm -hmm. made us with differences and here's the interesting thing we tend to divide over our differences mm -hmm. but our differences are designed to drive us together right because we're like a puzzle piece other, right right, right. But, the very thing that's supposed to cause us to feel a need for each other mm. is a thing that in the carnal mind, in the condition of sin, people y use those very things to draw lines of division. It's mm -hmm. a thing that's supposed to unite you. Mm -hmm. You're different than me, therefore I need you. Right. You're exactly. different than me, therefore you have something I don't have. And if I'm going to be the, the complete person that I I can be, mm -hmm. there's something you have to add to me. Right. And vice versa, right? And there's something inside of your experience that I need to have. There's mm -hmm. something there's something about your past, your history, or what you know, or who you are, or where you came from that mm -hmm. adds a dynamic to who I am. And it's not only tolerable mm -hmm. or agreeable, it's necessary. necessary. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's why the church can Sorry, go ahead. This no, is why no, the no. church can be diverse. Mm -hmm. That's why the church is supposed to be diverse. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to get over these issues mm -hmm. and understand that that right is right wherever it exists. Wherever it is. And it you is. have to acknowledge truth wherever you see it. Right? That's you right. Don't acknowledge that church becomes nasty. It does. It becomes nasty, a nasty organism. It becomes a sect or an ideologically driven organization mm -hmm. that inherently limits people's ability to excel. and It, it restricts their liberty. And we mentioned this in our Who and What We Are video. I'm a Christian, I'm very proud of it. But I don't just like to say offhand I'm a Christian without being able to give some sort of explanation just because and of definition for the it. name that Christianity has made for themselves of literally being division. Like you, mm. don't, you don't hear about all the hundreds of different types of Buddhists. You don't mm. hear about the hundreds of different types of, you know, Muslims. There's, you know, there's factions, but it's not like, but in Christianity, you cannot keep up with the different types of Christians there are. And that's never what Christianity was meant to be about. But you find Christians, you know, so-called Christians, because, I mean, what true Christian is not searching for unity? Dividing over the smallest things, like should be baptized by immersion or by sprinkling. And I'm not saying things we're not, are important. We're not saying that it doesn't matter. We're saying it doesn't yeah. matter. But mm -hmm. to divide over something like that? Mm -hmm. To completely cut people off because of it is it's just very intense. And I think recently what we've been talking about as a church a lot more is that to deal with the issue of racism would get rid of a lot of this these issues. Mm -hmm. um, could you speak as to how, because I think we've made a lot of proclamations about that that people could look up and see anywhere. But we've talked about how resolving the black-white issue is what would help with the reconciliation of everything. And a lot of people be like, that's a crazy statement. What are you all talking about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a deep subject. So deep. <laughs> we could go another hour on that. Probably you have a, a better guest to discuss the intricacies of that subject. I, I would be happy to try to touch on it some if you like. Mm -hmm. But again, now I want to go back to something you said a second ago. And I think this is really important because, because of how, well, the very thing we've been talking about, how the conversation is framed a certain way. There are trigger phrases. Mm -hmm. People want to, you know, pigeonhole you into a certain space. And so 
you know, I have, as I started to say earlier, I have friends on, you know, these far ends of the spectrum. And it's interesting because I, I feel like I'm sort of keenly aware of the positions that I have that's going to at least mildly offend this side mm -hmm. or that side. Mm -hmm. And I, I thankfully have, even outside of the church, several really good friends that we're able to have and hold conversations where there's an understanding that we don't agree about this, but we don't need to hate each other and right. maybe we can even learn something <laughs> even better from each other, right? Absolutely. So um, this subject itself is one of those kind of things mm -hmm. where the moment, like the moment I say white supremacy the exists. Moment. Literally the moment. Right? That so I, I grew up in, in Southern Oklahoma near the Texas border. <laughs> My family on my maternal side is a beautiful mix between hillbilly and redneck. <laughs> Proud of my heritage. You know, uh, we're what is called white people, mm -hmm. right? And and I'm not uh, the least bit, I'm proud of who I am and where I yes. came from. I am mm -hmm. not ashamed of the color mm -hmm. of my skin. I'm not, you know, like I I'm proud. Yes. I'm proud to be an American. Mm -hmm. And you can say, well, isn't America racist? Yes, America is founded on racist. It's, a, it's, it's been, and there we go. Here's, here's another offense. We're just letting the fences <laughs> out just, today, right? We're just, Here, just tossing them, them out. If anyone right? wants to be Finn, just come see them. <laughs> but, come but, on in. But in the same triggered. breath, I say, I, I love America and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Mm -hmm. I love, I love the, the First and Second Amendment. I love, I love the principles of freedom and mm -hmm. the radical idealism that America's founded on. It just needs to be for all people, right? Mm -hmm. So, so when, when, you, when you have these conversations, the moment you say white supremacy exists, immediately, oh, liberal church, mm -hmm. right? It must be. Right, <laughs> uh, they're, they're cut up with all this leftist stuff. Mm -hmm. They must be woke. Right, well, okay, yeah, we're woke. We're, 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 and I could just see someone's gonna have a headline, conservative church now talking about, <laughs> now turn go, woke. conservative church gone woke. <laughs> Statements about the existence of white supremacy. And so, so certainly we believe that white supremacy exists. We don't believe that you handle that subject through wokeism. We don't believe that you deal with it mm -hmm. in the way mm -hmm. that the left altogether deals with it. Mm -hmm. Again, we're not subscribing to a position that way. So first of all, you have to be able to even have the conversation. Right. <laughs> so there are going to be people who don't, don't like that you acknowledge that white supremacy exists, but the fact is that it does. The fact is that racism is not solved in America, right? And the fact is that we have been affected by that in the church. Absolutely. Which, by the way, if we're on the subject of who is the church, momentary diversion, we don't claim to know everything. Mm -hmm. We don't claim right. to have solved every problem. Mm -mm. We don't believe that we're past all the trouble. Right. We're working things out among ourselves. We've made Come mistakes. On, we're human. Mm -hmm. we, we, we've done things that were not the wisest thing to do. <laughs> we look back on certain decisions and say, hey, if we had that to do over again, we would do it differently. Mm -hmm. But I would challenge anybody to show me any organization anywhere yes, that doesn't have to say the same thing. Yeah. Or what person that would criticize us for some of our decisions mm -hmm. hasn't had to back up on some bad decisions mm -hmm. of their own, mm -hmm. right? So we're not making apology for who we are, but we also acknowledge that we're sorting the stuff out as we go. Mm -hmm. right. We're learning the language as we speak. Like we are human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are not, we don't claim to be angels. Mm -hmm. I know that people say things about what we believe, you know, that we're Christ or whatever. Mm -hmm. We are very well aware that we are not Jesus Christ. <laughs> As a minister of the Lord, I'm 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 keenly aware of my own You're sure about it. humanity. Very sure. I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm not Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't plan on starting a movement like that. So, you know, we're sorting this stuff out. And someone said something really good to me recently. It was it was really good. Uh, and this person is a friend of mine who shall remain unnamed. <laughs> but this person said, you know, I was having a bit of trouble with some of the things that you all were saying, even mm -hmm. particularly about some of these issues here. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't like that you all were saying this now or whatever it was. And then this person said, but you know, I thought to myself, they're inside of their story. They're working through their story. Mm -hmm. Just like I'm working through my story. Right. I wouldn't want someone to just, you know, put the hammer down on me and say, 
you know, like like there's no room to improve or learn mm -hmm. or or like my story's suddenly over. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to be judged for everything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. Like time's not over. The church is still learning. We're still we're still figuring out how to address the issues mm -hmm. and how to embody Christ in the world in a way that's that doesn't compromise Christian values, but is also socially aware. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so I thought that was a really good thing to acknowledge, like they're in, they're working through their story. And that's mm -hmm. what's happening with us, right? It's important to understand that it's not, it, we, we can't look at it like, oh, this is those people issue, they're, those people's yes. issue over there. That's, that's what they're so dealing good. with. Sure. And then the poor people got their issue mm -hmm. over here. And then the mm -hmm. Germans got their problem over mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. It's actually it's everybody's our problem. our issue, right? It's, Holistic it's, problem. Everybody's problem is everybody's problem. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's way no matter profound. how much we want to isolate ourselves mm -hmm. because we want to live this really good, easy life and we want to think that we're above the, the you know, some of these, these issues mm -hmm. or, you know, we're not affected by racism or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the fact is we're all affected mm -hmm. by this inescapable web of mutuality, mm -hmm. right? There's no way we're going to get around it. And so... All of these things are, are, are so intermingled and convoluted that you can't really just touch one thing. The reason we say that the so-called black-white issue is central is because, for one, if you look at the, the role that America plays in the world, mm -hmm. right? We're not saying America's the best country or the only country. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a bit biased. I live in America. <laughs> in America. Happy to I'm happy to be an American. I'm just saying, if you look at the the culmination of things uh, uh, of oppressions that happens in the American institution. If you look at what happens with the the American you know slave trade and the oppression of the black man in America, what are this is what people don't understand. We're not saying it's the only issue. Right. We're not even saying if you're going to compare brutalisms or I made up a word mm -hmm. there. I think <laughs> uh, it makes sense. <laughs> Or, or how many people were killed. Mm -hmm. We're not making the case that necessarily it's the, the worst like that. Now, it may be. And honestly, that's like the first chapter of Brother Steph's book. He says oppressive comparisons. Exactly. Like that's exactly where you do not start. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because it's not I'm more oppressed than you or who's more oppressed than each other, right? It's, it's where can we grab a hold of this issue in a way that allows us to address the big picture. And by dealing with the, the so-called American race issue, which by the way, we don't believe in race. Mm -hmm. No sir, it's social construct. Right, it allows you to grab it in its most refined form. I'm quoting Brother Hargrave, mm -hmm. this not quoting directly, but very closely. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that the way that the institution has disguised itself and covered its own oppressions mm -hmm. because there's no greater oppression than to be supremely oppressed and not even know it. And not even know. Right. Or I'm not suggesting that black people don't know that they're oppressed. I'm just mm -hmm. saying there, there's a sense that it's, it's, it's successfully, I'll make up another word, propagandized <laughs> itself. Maybe that is a word. Propagated. Someone fact check me, please. <laughs> Propagated. Yeah, I, I intentionally said propagandized. It's used propaganda, propaganda. to mm -hmm. to create an image for itself and, and thereby it, it uh, as all oppressive systems have done, but it has supremely achieved the, the, uh, the quality of hiding in the midst of the most atrocious, the most... Um, wicked oppressions. Mm -hmm. And so when you get a hold of what has happened to the black man in America, and if you are willing to face that, mm -hmm. then you're grabbing it in, in a very refined state. And then, right. and then it, it's not that you don't acknowledge these other Oppression periods of history or, you know, it's, it's just that you're saying we can acknowledge all of those and then ignore this issue and the devil gets away so yes. to speak. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's important because in America, it's so difficult to talk about, which is evidence that the problem still exists. Right. People right. wouldn't be so triggered if it wasn't still right. something working there, right? Yeah. You, you're not allowed to address it because 
if you're black and you dress it, well, you're just an angry black man. If you're mm -hmm. white and you dress it, then you're just a, a snowflake liberal, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? And so, again, I, I think it's important to reiterate, we're not saying that other people's oppression doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We're not saying that, um, that we're ignoring those things or diminishing the suffering. Like the last thing we would ever want to do is diminish suffering. Right. We're just simply saying there's a unique quality to the American institution and the oppression of the black man in America that if you can deal with that, it's central to understanding oppression at large. Right. Mm -hmm. It's central to understanding the, the goal of oppression mm -hmm. and how it works, how mm -hmm. it disguises itself, right. how it perpetuates itself, how it hides. And what did you say part of the sneakiness of it is not not so much that, you know, maybe that black man doesn't know he, that he's oppressed because I would say at least a large portion of African-American community would in some form confess to that, but that the white man doesn't actually, and I'm not saying, I'm generalizing here. Mm -hmm. Obviously there's people that have the understanding, but that there would be a large population of people who call themselves white that would not understand that the oppression of their black brothers is actually an oppression of themselves. And that would be the insidiousness of it, that they right. they were also oppressed by, you know, their brothers being bound and they didn't even know it. That's like that a is correct. Really tough conversation because no one wants to be a victim, right? No one wants to know that they've been tricked into being a victim their whole life. So I think it's a sensitive, sensitive spot to talk about. But and I think that's why it's important that the church talk about it. We're mm -hmm. supposed to be there. That's right. Where it's tough, that's where, that's where we need to be, right? And the church should that's make correct. that safe space, right, for having mm -hmm. those... I mean, they are uncomfortable discussions. They're uncomfortable in the church. Mm -hmm. With my own friends, people I've grown up with, the conversations are uncomfortable. But I yeah. think they have to be had. Because it implicates you to an extent, right? Like, right. not that you are intentionally being a racist. Like, I, I pride myself to an extent of having rejected the preju prejudice that I grew up around. Mm -hmm. I, I was some, something, I don't know what it was, but God you gave me the gift. awareness <laughs> To, to disdain the racism that I grew up around. I didn't like it, I didn't want to associate with it. I, I tried to distance myself, even from my own uh, culture be, and heritage because I made this association uh, of the way I came up and racism. And, you know, I had this mentality of this is wrong they shouldn't be doing this to them, mm -hmm. right? To them. To them. Right? That That's was the my thought word. process. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't do this to them. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't treat them that way. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that by be your mind being conditioned by the system to think a certain way, right. people are oppressed in their thoughts. Yes. That's the thing that people don't understand. And by the way, we don't think, in a sense, everybody's oppressed, but in another sense, everybody wants to be oppressed. It's popular to be oppressed now. <laughs> to and be we're the not, one. Yeah, we're not, I'm, I'm not going there. But, but but there is a such thing as oppression that's happening. And people are oppressed in their thoughts, their right. their their spirits and their their lives, their, their the essence of their, their, their souls are suppressed by systems of thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is oppression. And if you can... If you can oppress someone in their thoughts and get them to believe a certain way, and that's the, that's the deceptive nature of it, because mm -hmm. then you live inside of it and you think your slave master has your best interest. You think that the people at the top of the system are for you, mm -hmm. and you actually praise the people that are oppressing you. And this is happening left and right, right. in politics today. Mm -hmm. But the fact is that to even think they shouldn't do that to them is indicative that I would not have been aware of how I was affected by right. it. Like the fact that I was victimized by this thought process. Mm -hmm. And I can look back and see how I was influenced by, by these, these racist um, ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I would not consider myself a racist. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're not, saying, America. we're not saying all white people are racist. Absolutely not. We're saying that everybody, regardless of their skin tone, is affected by this issue and in some form victimized by this issue. And in fact, the denial of that is proof that you're affected. That's right. And that you're oppressed by it. Mm -hmm. And so again, back to our, our subject of, you know, who is the church? You can't really answer that question without dealing with where we stand on these issues, mm -hmm. right? And we do make a lot of claims. I mean, isn't the Bible audacious? 
I mean, I mean the Christian claim is fundamentally, fundamentally radical and audacious. Absolutely. The Christian mm-hmm. claim. If, if what we claim is not uh, otherworldly and supernatural mm-hmm. and, and shocking, mm-hmm. then, then we, don't, we don't aren't making claims that the early church made. We're not making the claims of, of that Jesus Christ himself made. Mm-hmm. The Christian claim is, is fundamentally so. And when Christianity ceases to make those radical militant claims, it ceases to be true Christianity. That's right. right? I'm not interested in a humdrum, mm-hmm. religious, like sometimes I, I get, mm-hmm. like my phone pushes me videos of like church services and the, the, the more, the older I get, the more I look at it and like, I don't want nothing to do with so that. It, it is, it is embarrassing. Like, I don't blame people. I don't blame people for not wanting to be a Christian oh, mm-hmm. when they look at church. When that's what they see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 embarrassing. It's not alive. It's not vibrant. It's not moving. It's not making a difference in the social atmosphere. We're not it's talking just... about what's relevant. They refuse to have tough conversations about what is right in front of their face. And a lot of times, I think that's honestly what draws a lot of youth away. I mean, it, this what draws everybody away, but the youth have this need to that's right. be a part stimulation of and that's... to be part of a cause that matters and you know is militant. I think there's that drive in all of us, and I think that's what makes church kind of ugly and unattractive. Yeah, because you want something that's real and that's authentic mm-hmm. and that's vibrant, right? And and a lot of times church, a lot of times church is it, it, it emasculates men, like to mm. to, to come that's under a whole other topic. to come under it <laughs> is yeah to, because to come under that you have to kind of become a little, you know. Like, uh, foofy. That's not the word. <laughs> Did the, you just what, invent another word? I, I'm a, I'm a, this is the <laughs> word, word. Vocabulary invention night. Um, to, to come under what is called church, you have to deny, I'm saying in, in many cases, mm-hmm. you have to deny your own, like, manhood and, uh, or, or womanhood. And it, it, it makes you fake. Mm-hmm. It, it takes away the teeth. Of, of of real humanity. Like you can't, everybody's gotta be so nice. And, mm-hmm. and, and by the way, th- this is important when we're talking about who we are as a church mm-hmm. because people get upset at things that we say. Mm-hmm. We, we make strong claims or we're, mm-hmm. you know, but look, if, if, if we all have to sit around a table and hold hands and pray and just be nice and never disagree and just love each other and love and not get mad at nobody, I'm telling you, I'm not interested it in that. sounds like yeah, the most boring out. thing Who's ever. Who's interested in that? That's what I mean by you have to be emasculated. It, it sounds completely it fake. It puts you under something that's totally not even real. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, let's just, oh, oh, oh we love you. You know, that's we like, love that's Jesus. That's not even human. We have personalities you and homogeny is, is ugly. It's not nice. And, and people... Sometimes it's good for a Christian to get mad. I agree with you. <laughs> the, there are people that do things that I look at them and I think, you are completely foolish for doing that. And I'm, I don't like you for that. Does mm-hmm. that make me not a Christian? Right? Absolutely not. I mean, but we have to sit around and, and pretend like, you know, look, like things aren't happening before our eyes. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, that people aren't, aren't hurting each other and and people aren't being like reproaching what it means to be a Christian. I get mm-hmm. mad at fake Christians. Yes. Now I'm a human being and I'm not saying that I don't, I make my mistakes and I'm not perfect in the sense of, you know, always getting it right every time. But I wake up every day and, and look myself squarely in the face and say, you're going to live the best you possibly can. Mm-hmm. And that's the burden of a Christian. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's to live the best life you can. And when people are, are just playing this religious game, it's it's distasteful. Yes. And I don't like it. And and people use religion to justify all kinds of nastiness. Yes, they do. All kinds of nastiness. The people standing, look. They hide you, under it. They do. Mm-hmm. Let's, how, how about this? You get people that go out and, and they're on their, their third divorce, their fourth wife, working on their fourth divorce, mm-hmm. talking to their fifth wife on the side, mm-hmm. and they're out holding a sign at a LGBTQ rally mm-hmm. talking about you're sexual sin. Talking about sexual sin. Who's All the while going you're a to Christian. To you? Conservative politicians going out and taking a stand against homosexuality when 
they themselves behind closed doors are doing some of the same nasty stuff. That's upsetting. Mm -hmm. Christians ought to be mad at that stuff. Yes. We ought to call that stuff Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And you say, well, Christians are supposed to judge. Well, do you judge? Do you wake up and decide if you're going to you're judging uh, all day long. walk into the middle of the highway or not? Are you? Do you make judgments of what lines you stay between mm -hmm. when you're driving when you're down driving. the road? Mm -hmm. Do you make judgments about if you're going to jump in the neighbor's yard with, with a pit bull? unsafe thought. I'm not going, I'm to, not going judge. to make like, judgments. I'm not going to, like, what are you even saying? Everybody judges all the time. Mm -hmm. People don't have a problem with judging. They have a problem when you judge something that they like or they agree with. Right. But we, you have to make judgments, judgments to live, mm -hmm. and Christians have to do that. And someone can say that we're judgmental because we make claims. We make some radical claims sometimes. People take it out of context. Right. You know, they don't follow what's actually said. They'll take some clip that Brother Steph some some snippet it's always of a message. A clip. Right. It's never the whole thing. They'll take things that I've said uh, and and they'll go they make the rounds on the internet or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know what? I said it kind of audacious on purpose mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if somebody wants to take what I said and not investigate right. it, mm -hmm. not ask me what I meant or mm -hmm. what I was thinking, mm -hmm. not corroborate it against other things I've said, mm -hmm. not not verify whether the rumor's mm -hmm. true or whatever, mm -hmm. and they choose to go believe it, then by all means believe whatever you want to. Mm -hmm. It is a free country. You're not an honest Christian. Like you're not an honest person. You know? Like who wants to go around just believing rumors about people? You know, the fact is, if they would just take the time to get to know us, if they would. And, and, and it's great because a lot of your viewers, they're just genuinely interested. They want to yeah. know, you all are pretty interesting, I have to say. I don't blame them for, for liking you. But they, they want to know what it's about. But then there are those people that you're never going to make them happy. They're, they're always going to no. have, they're always. I'm going to have some say. Keyboard warriors that, mm -hmm. you know, want to. <laughs> keyboard warriors, so I love funny. that. Yeah. But you'll never meet them face to face, the face will you? No, warriors. no. They're not willing. They're they're afraid of a conversation. They're afraid mm -hmm. of conflict. Let's just keep and anybody them. that is is willing to have conflict intimidates them. Mm -hmm. And and there's a certain kind of person that that's that way. Mm -hmm. And we can't pander to that. We have mm -hmm. to stand for what we know and what we believe. We'll admit when we're wrong. We'll come back and apologize if necessary. But we can't go around being apologetic about being Christians mm -hmm. or being the church of God. And we want to explain these things to right. people. We want them to understand it, but they have to want to know the truth too. Yes, right. So there's things that I've said that people are like, did you hear what Addison Everett said on the internet? <laughs> Look it up. And, You'll and, find and, it. You'll yeah, find it. Right. If you want to, and, you can and, find and, it. And, and the clips are kind of funny because I'm like, yeah, I said that, you know, but but, okay, you, you don't have context for it. Mm -hmm. And I did say it intentionally a little bit of a way to kind of, you know. But, mm -hmm. look, Jesus said, destroy this temple and I'll build it again in three, days, in three days. And he did not explain and, himself. And he didn't, he didn't even explain himself. He so if you want to believe that's what body. I meant, then you go ahead. Eat my flesh and mm -hmm. drink my blood was an extremely offensive thing to say And how many, the, the scripture says many people went away. They went away because they, because they didn't want to know what he mm -hmm. really meant. And they that's the problem. To. They don't really want to know. Because mm -hmm. if you want to know, you'll ask. They wanted right. him to mean that. Drink my blood. Oh, he meant it. Yes, he did. They wished he said it so that they could go away. That's right. And Or they hear a rumor. Did you hear Jesus said to eat his flesh? Or did you? Hear, or it'll be some wild thing like mm -hmm. that they're gonna go eat flesh in the in the field at midnight. Yeah. You know, it's it's and some, like oh, it's true. Yeah, that, that, that they eat flesh around the bonfire every <laughs> on the thirteenth of every month. You know, and, and they just gather with all the other people who validate the same. That's right. Because they, they want to believe a rumor. Because they want to believe a rumor. And we say, you know what? If you want to believe a rumor, then by all means. Help Enjoy yourself. yourself. Help yourself. Guess. But if you really want to know, we'll be happy to talk to you and we'll give you context. You can be mad at me for saying it in a way that was, you know, I, sometimes I tend to speak in a superlative way, if you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, to make a point. And if you don't get the point, then it's fine. It's up to you if you want to, if you want to <laughs> investigate or not. It's up to you. <laughs> but this is who we are, and we're not. A, we're not. We're sorry not one for bit it. ashamed of it. Right. Well, this has been an outstanding conversation. We are so happy that Brother Addison Everett took the time to drive out here. It was a drive, came all his way, brought his family and everything. We're so thankful he came, got on the podcast with us, and had this discussion with us. And um, now everybody's got questions. It just We're just going to be dropping this link everywhere. Just dropping the link, dropping the link. <laughs> you want to watch it? It's right here. It's right here. But this is an important part of who we are. This is an important part of our message. If you understand this about us, it gives you context for everything we say. All of our passion about social issues, about racism, about resolving those things, about humanity coming together in unity, this is why we believe that way. And um, 
we're very proud of it. We're proud of the militancy in, in true Christianity. Um, we're proud of the bold statements that we make and we wouldn't want it any other way. We, we don't want to be religious. We don't want to, we're not here to play games. We're here to be God's church and we're here to show the world what a real Christian looks like. Well, that's all we have for you this evening. You know what time it is. Peace, love, and hair grease.